Lord of the Flies, Part 2, page 103. Simon, talking in front of Ralph, felt a flicker of incredulity. A beast with claws that scratched, that sat on a mountaintop, that left no tracks, and yet was not fast enough to catch Sam and Eric. However, Simon thought of the beast. There rose before his inward sight the picture of a human at once heroic and sick. He sighed. Other people could stand up and speak to an assembly. Apparently, without that dreadful feeling of the pressure of personality, could say what they would as though they were speaking to only one person. He stepped aside and looked back. Ralph was coming along, holding his spear over his shoulder. Diffidently, Simon allowed his pace to slacken until he was walking side by side with Ralph and looking up at him through the coarse black hair that now fell to his eyes. Ralph glanced sideways, smiled constrainedly, as though he had forgotten that Simon had made a fool of himself, then looked away again at nothing. For a moment or two, Simon was happy to be accepted, and then he ceased to think about himself. When he bashed into a tree, Ralph looked sideways impatiently, and Robert sniggered. Simon reeled, and a white spot on his forehead turned red and trickled. Simon dismissed, excuse me, Ralph dismissed Simon and returned to his personal hell. They would reach the castle sometime, and the chief would have to go forward. Jack came trotting back. We're in sight now. All right, we'll get as close as we can. He followed Jack toward the castle where the ground rose slightly. On their left was an impenetrable tangle of creepers and trees. Why couldn't there be something in that? Because you can see. Nothing goes in or out. What about the castle, then? Look. Ralph parted the screen of grass and looked out. There were only a few more yards of stony ground, and then the two sides of the island came almost together so that one expected a peak of headland. But instead of this, a narrow ledge of rock, a few yards wide and perhaps fifteen long, continued the island out into the sea. There lay another of those pieces of pink squareness that underlay the structure of the island. This side of the castle, perhaps a hundred feet high, was the pink bastion they had seen from the mountain top. The rock of the cliff was split and the top littered with great lumps that seemed to totter. Behind Ralph, the tall grass had filled with silent hunters. Ralph looked at Jack. You're a hunter. Jack went red. I know. All right. Something deep in Ralph spoke to him. I'm chief. I'll go. Don't argue. He turned to the others. You, hide here. Wait for me. He found his voice tended either to disappear or to come out too loud. He looked at Jack. Do you think? Jack muttered. I've been all over. It must be here. I see. Simon mumbled confusedly. I don't believe in the beast. Ralph answered him politely as if agreeing about the weather. No, I suppose not. His mouth was tight and pale. He put back his hair very slowly. Well, so long. He forced his feet to move until they had carried him out onto the neck of land. He was surrounded on all sides by chasms of empty air. There was nowhere to hide, even if one did not have to go on. He paused on the narrow neck and looked down. Soon, in a matter of centuries, the sea would make an island of the castle. On the right hand was a lagoon, troubled by the open sea. And on the left? Ralph shuddered. The lagoon had protected them from the Pacific, and for some reason only Jack had gone right down to the water on the other side. Now he saw the landman's view of the swell, and it seemed like the breathing of some stupendous creature. Slowly the water sank among the rocks, revealing pink tables of granite, strange growths of coral, polyp, and weed. Down, down the waters went, whispering like the wind among the heads of the forest. There was one flat rock there, spread like a table, and the water sucking down on the four weedy sides made them seem like cliffs. Then the sleeping leviathan breathed out, the waters rose, the weed streamed, and the water boiled over the table rock with a roar. There was no sense of the passage of waves, only this minute-long fall and rise and fall. Ralph turned away to the red cliff. They were waiting behind him in the long grass, waiting to see what he would do. He noticed that the sweat in his palm was cool now, realized with surprise he did not really expect to meet any beasts, and did not know what he would do about it if he did. He saw that he could climb the cliff, but this was not necessary. The squareness of the rock allowed a sort of plinth around it, so that to the right, over the lagoon, one could inch along the ledge and turn the corner out of sight. It was easy going, and soon he was peering round the rock. Nothing but what you might expect. Pink, tumbled boulders with guano layered on them like icing, and a steep slope up to the shattered rocks that crowned the bastion. A sound behind him made him turn. Jack was edging along the ledge. Couldn't let you do it on your own. Ralph said nothing. He led the way over to the rocks, inspected a sort of half-cave that held nothing more terrible than a clutch of rotten eggs, and at last sat down, looking around him and tapping the rock with the butt of his spear. Jack was excited. What a place for a fort! A 
column of spray wetted them. No fresh water. What's that, then? There was indeed a long green smudge halfway up the rock. They climbed up and tasted the trickle of water. You could keep a coconut shell there filling all the time. Not me. This is a rotten place. Side by side, they scaled the last height to where the diminishing pile was crowned by the last broken rock. Jack struck the near one with his fist and it grated slightly. Do you remember? Consciousness of the bad times in between came to them both. Jack talked quickly. Shove a palm trunk under that, and if an enemy came, look. A hundred feet below them was a narrow causeway, then the stony ground, then the grass dotted with heads, and behind that the forest. One heave, cried Jack, exulting, and wee! who made a sweeping movement with his hand. Ralph looked toward the mountain. What's the matter? Ralph turned. Why? You were looking. Uh, I don't know why. There's a signal now. Nothing to show. You're nuts on the signal. The taut blue horizon encircled them, broken only by the mountain top. That's all we've got. He leaned his spear against a rocking stone and pushed back two handfuls of hair. We'll have to go back and climb the mountain. That's where they saw the beast. The beast won't be there. What else can we do? The others, waiting in the grass, saw Jack and Ralph unharmed and broke cover into the sunlight. They forgot the beast in the excitement of exploration. They swarmed across the bridge and soon were climbing and shouting. Ralph stood now, one hand against an enormous red block a block large as a mill wheel that had been split off and hung tottering. Somberly, he watched the mountain. He clenched his fist and beat hammerwise on the red wall at his right. His lips were tightly compressed and his eyes yearned beneath the fringe of hair. Smoke. He sucked his bruised fist. Jack, come on! But Jack was not there. A knot of boys making a great noise that he had not noticed were heaving and pushing at a rock. As he turned, the base cracked, and the whole mass toppled into the sea, so that a thunderous plume of spray leapt halfway up the cliff. Stop it! Stop it! His voice struck a silence among them. Smoke! A strange thing happened in his head. Something flittered there in front of his mind like a bat's wing, obscuring his idea. Smoke! At once the ideas were back in the anger. We want smoke, and you go wasting your time. You roll rocks! Roger shouted. We've got plenty of time! Ralph shook his head. We'll go to the mountain. The clamor broke out. Some of the boys wanted to go back to the beach. Some wanted to roll more rocks. The sun was bright, and danger had faded with the darkness. Jack, the beast might be on the other side. You can lead again. You've been. We could go by the shore. There's fruit. Bill came up to Ralph. Why can't we stay here for a bit? That's right. Let's have a fort. There's no food here, said Ralph, and no shelter. Not much fresh water. This would make a wizard fort. We can roll rocks right under the bridge. I say we'll go on, shouted Ralph furiously. We've got to make certain. We'll go now. Let's stay here. Back to the shelter. I'm tired. No. Ralph struck the skin off his knuckles. They did not seem to hurt. I'm chief. We've got to make certain. Can't you see the mountain? There's no signal showing. There may be a ship out there, and all of you are off your rockers. Mutinously, the boys fell silent or muttering. Jack led the way down the rock and across the bridge.